Hello. This video provides a demonstration of the use of the Cox Proportional Hazard Model in SPSS based on example data provided in Luke and Homan from 1998. The presentation includes analysis of a standard Cox regression model, evaluation of the proportional hazards assumption, and analysis of data using Cox regression when a categorical covariate is present. A copy of the data, as well as this PowerPoint, that's going to contain more information than will be covered in the video, can be downloaded from the links underneath the video description. So if you find the video and, support, and supporting materials helpful, please take time to like the video and share the link with others. And also please consider subscribing to my YouTube site. So in this demonstration, we're going to use Cox regression to model predictors of the time elapsed from release from inpatient alcohol treatment until relapse, that is the onset of drinking. So the observation period was the 30-day post-discharge period. The covariates in the model included level of psychological distress, which is reflected in the symptoms variable, type of treatment group, which is reflected in the group variable, which is coded zero for detox only, one for treatment, and an indicator of whether a person attended AA following release. That variable is coded zero for no, one for yes. The weeks variable is the number of weeks until relapse or right censoring of a particular case. The event variable is the status or censoring variable coded zero for censored, one where the terminal event, that is relapse, was observed. So here's our data opened up in SPSS and we're going to walk through the procedure. So we're going to go to Analyze, go down to Survival, then we're going to click on Cox Regression right here. When this box opens up we can lay out our model specification. So we're going to move the weeks variable over to the time box. We're going to move the event variable which is coded 1 for uh, relapse, 0 for cases censored. We're going to move it over to the status box. We'll click on define event and we're going to type in a 1, continue, and then now you can see the little question mark changes to a 1. Next we'll move our independent variables or covariates over to this box right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click under options and request confidence intervals for the hazard ratios. So we'll click continue and then on OK. And so now you'll see that with block 1 we have our basic model. Uh, the first set of coefficients is testing the overall model fit, the coefficients that are provided in the this table variables in the equation uh, are used to evaluate the contributions of the individual covariates to the overall model fit. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. Here we have a likelihood ratio test of the fit of the full model relative to a null or intercept only model. Statistical significance would indicate that the model, the full model is a significant improvement in fit relative to the null model. So when this occurs, a researcher can infer that at least one population regression coefficient is different from zero. The result of our test suggests that the model is a significant improvement in fit relative to the null. The regression coefficients demonstrate the prediction of the hazard for the terminal event as a function of the covariates in the model. A positive coefficient indicates a positive relationship between the covariate and the hazard for the terminal event, in our case, relapse. This means that higher values on the covariate is associated with less survival time. A negative coefficient indicates a negative relationship between the covariate and the hazard for the terminal event. Higher values on the covariate are associated with longer survival time. So recall that our group variable was coded 0 for detox only and 1 for treatment. The significant negative coefficient indicates that the ha hazard rate for alcohol relapse is greater in the detox only as opposed to the treatment group. Participation in AA, coded 0 for no and 1 for yes, was negatively predictive of the hazard for relapse, indicating that those who participated in AA were less likely to relapse than those who did not, or to relapse early than those who did not. Finally, greater levels of psychological distress was a significant positive predictor of the hazard for relapse. So in other words, individuals with greater distress were predicted to relapse earlier than those with lower distress. The EXPB column you see in your SPSS output is a hazard ratio and reflects the multiplicative change in the hazard for the terminal event per unit increase on a predictor. Hazard ratios less than one are associated with negative regression slopes, whereas those values that are greater than one are associated with positive slopes. And a hazard ratio of one indicates that there's no uh, change in the hazard per unit change on the covariate. 
Now let's look at the proportional hazards assumption. Cox regression assumes that the relationship between the hazard for the terminal event and time is not dependent or conditional on the levels of the covariates. For example, if you have a factor variable included in your model, then the assumption is demonstrated to the extent that the hazard function does not differ between the groups. So to test whether the proportional hazards assumption is met, you can test the interaction between the time measure and the covariates in your model. If the assumption is violated, then you should include the relevant interaction terms alongside your original predictors in the final model. A simple approach is to use a hierarchical regression strategy where you begin with the original set of covariates and then add in the relevant interaction terms and then evaluate the change in fit of the original model relative to the model containing the interaction terms. So let's carry out the previous analysis but also include tests of the proportional odds assumption. So before I walk you through uh, this, uh, the steps involved, let me just kind of show you, uh, draw your attention to a couple of things uh, with respect to going through the menus in SPSS. In this case, you're going to go through Analyze, Survival again, and then Cox with Time Dependent Covariate. When this box opens up, you have a little time indicator variable right here, and you're going to move it over to the Expression box. And if you're going to perform any type of transformation or anything like that, that's where you're going to do it. For our demonstration, we are going to leave the original time variable as it is. So you'll also find that once you click on the model button, then this box is going to open up and you'll see that everything looks pretty much the same as what we did before. Um, so again, you'll be designating your time variable, your status variable, and then you're going to be incorporating covariates as well. Um, in addition, though, you'll click the next button and then you're going to be moving the interaction terms over into that box as well. So this is the block two of two that you see right here. So let me walk you through that. So here we have our data again, and I'm going to go to Analyze, Survival, and then go down to Cox with Time Dependent Covariates and click on this. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. So you'll see right here we have a time indicator uh, and we're going to move it over to the expression box. Then we're going to click on the model button right here. So I'm going to click on that and, our, uh, and, and essentially this box opens up. And we lay everything out as we did before. So we'll move the weeks variable over to the time box. We're going to move event over to the status box. Define event, we're going to uh, type in a 1 right here as we did before. We're going to move our group, symptoms, and AA variables over to block 1. Now things this is where things get a little bit different. We're going to move the we're going to click on next button right here and then I'm going to hold down my control button and I'm going to highlight the uh, time indicator and group right here and click on the A times B button. So I'm going to click that button and move that over. I'm going to do the same thing with symptoms and with AA. So now we have all three of our interaction terms included in the model. So now when I click on OK, you'll see that block one essentially contains all the same results from our previous analysis, whereas block two now incorporates the interaction terms. So at the top, where we have the omnibus test of model coefficients, again, we have the change from previous step. So we have a chi-square test, which is essentially, in this case, testing our model containing the interaction terms relative to our model that just only contains the original um, uh, covariates. And so if this is significant, that would indicate that by adding in the uh, interaction terms, we have a significant improvement in fit relative to the previous uh, model. In this case, though, we do not, uh, as our p-value is 0 0.208. We could also evaluate each of the individual interaction terms as well um, if this test happened to be statistically significant, which is not. So as so unsurprisingly, all of the p-values associated with those interaction terms are not statistically significant. All this taken together suggests that it is unnecessary to treat any of the covariates as time dependent within our model. Finally, it is possible to incorporate a factor variable into our model by using by instructing SPSS to carry out dummy coding of our um, factor variable. Now previously we used the group variable and the AA variable and both of those were binary variables. 
And because they were binary, we could include them in our model without having to do any uh, recoding. Moreover, uh, we had already had the variables in dummy coded uh, form. So symptom three, though, is a new variable that I just derived from the symptoms variable, where I created an ordered categorical variable with values of one for low, two for medium, and three for high. Uh, ordinarily, I would not recommend taking a continuous measure and creating a categorical variable from it, but this is for the purpose of this demonstration. So when you're carrying out the analysis, you'll go back through Cox regression and uh, once you've included the categorical or factor variable into this box right here, you're going to click on a categorical tab. And a box will open up which will allow you to instruct SPSS in terms of how to perform the uh, dummy coding. So let's do this um, in SPSS. So I'm reopening up my SPSS uh, data set. I'm going to go to Analyze Survival and Cox regression and instead of using the symptoms variable I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put the symptom 3 variable in. Next I'll click on categorical and this then what I'll do is move the symptoms 3 variable over to the categorical covariates box. You'll notice that now it says indicator the contrast is indicator and you can see at the bottom right here it's got a little reference category so you have to decide on whether you want the first group or the last group to be your reference category. I'm going to select first uh, so that will mean that the low symptom or low distress group will be considered the reference category. So I'm going to click on that and then click change and you'll notice that up here that is reflected. So next I'll click on continue and then on OK and so now I have my output but now it incorporates uh, the dummy variables. So you see there's uh, symptom 3 without a coefficient right here uh, but we have symptom uh, 3, 1 and symptom 3, 2 and those are dummy variables that reflect the differences between uh, a, a given uh, category on the symptoms variable and the baseline or reference category. So again we see that the overall model is a significant improvement in fit relative to the null model and the symptom 3 um, one variable is the dummy variable that represents the comparison between the group coded 2 originally that's the medium distress group with the baseline or reference category that is the low distress group and that difference is not significant the symptom 3 2 variable represents the comparison between the group coded 3 originally and the reference category we see that this comparison is significant which indicates that persons who are higher in distress were significantly more at risk of relapse than persons low in distress so that concludes this video demonstration the last page of the PowerPoint contains references and resources so be sure to check it out again if you like the video please take time to click like and uh, share the video with others and also again please consider subscribing to my YouTube site. Thanks for watching.